So let's get back to the differential equation solver that we looked at last time, right? If you recall, we had a problem where, you know, the first set of uh, elements to be put in, right? M1, M2, A4, there we pretty much had no doubts about what to put in place, right? M1 and M2 are on the critical path. They seem to be the most important uh, operations. So I straight away go ahead and put M1 and M2 on step zero, right? It seems fairly obvious that, you know, if I somehow differ M1 and M2 and do M4 and M6 instead in the first step, then definitely, you know, my critical path is going to get affected, right? I'm going to take longer than I would otherwise take, okay? So that intuitively is easy to justify, okay? The tricky thing came at step two, or rather in mean, step one in the clock cycle number one in this case, right? Because I essentially have these three things out here, right? Three multiply, uh, multiply operations from which to choose. And which choice I make will determine whether or not I get a good schedule or not. Okay. So what are the three choices? I could either choose to put M3 and M4 onto the multiplier hardware for cycle number one, right? A5 of course is a given. A5 is definitely going to happen at cycle number one on either A1 or A2, I don't care which, okay? But I could do either M3 and M4, or I could do M4 and M6, or the third choice is M3 and M6, okay? And the question that we need to answer is basically, which of these is the right choice, okay? And essentially the question is, you know, how do you come up with a systematic way by which you choose correctly, right? Which one should you defer? Which one should you push off till a later point in time? Okay. Now, one answer that is given for, uh, that is actually quite effective in a lot of these cases is to use something called the level. Okay. And what level means is pretty much just the definition of the ALAP schedule, right? The as late as possible. So what does ALAP uh, mean? It essentially says that I can start from the last operation, right? All operations which can execute last, I give them a level of zero, okay? So in other words, I basically say that this one, this one, this one, these three operations, A2, A3, and A5 are all given level zero because they don't have any other task depending on them, okay? And now from there, I start going upwards, right? Which is why, for example, A1 and M3, or rather M5, these both get level one, okay? So do M6 and A4, as you can see over here, right? And if I go further back, then M3 and M4 get level two, and M1 and M2 get level three, okay? So, this ALAP schedule, why is it useful? Because in some sense, what it's telling you is not only how late can I defer an operation, but in some ways it is also telling you how important is an operation. Okay. What do I mean by that? It now, by looking at this M1 and M2 having a level of three, right? You can sort of look at it and say, okay, you know, uh, clearly M1 and M2 are the highest priority operations that I need to schedule, do them first. And now, if you look at it, you will see that M3 and M4 both have a priority of two, okay? Whereas M6 has a priority of only one, right? M5, of course, is not even in the ready list. It is on the waiting list. But if it was in the ready list, it would still have a priority only of one, okay? So this pretty much straight away tells you that, that the right choice would be to take M3 and M4 and put them in here. Schedule them at this point in time. Okay. This is going to be the, uh, the this is most likely going to give you the best solution. Okay. And in fact, as we saw last time, what happens is if I do take M3 and M4, right, what I end up with is I will get 
A5 also scheduled over here. After that, what will happen? M5 will come into the uh, ready list. And uh, that's it. M5 is the only one that will come there, right? But then what will happen uh, is that uh, M5 and A1, right? M5 and A1, both of these will come into the list. And at that point, what will happen is I can then do M5 and M6 over here and A1 at this point, right? And after that, I can basically finish A2 and A3, both in cycle number three, okay? And all of that happened because of this choice of M3 and M4, which have a priority of two, okay? So at least in this particular example, what we can see is this choice of priority, right? This value that we gave to each of the items helped us to solve the problem correctly, okay? But if you think about it in the context of the subset sum problem, right? This priority list is actually something, you know, it's very easy to compute, right? ALAP schedules are very easy to calculate. And, uh, you know, it. so that should sort of set off an alarm bell, right? This is too easy, right? And in fact, that is the case. It turns out that this priority list business is only a heuristic, right? It is not a guaranteed optimum algorithm, okay? So even though it looks like it is a good way of scheduling, you can construct a bad situation or more likely, you know, you will come up with a bad situation in practice, which will not give you the optimum, right? It will be possible that somebody going in and actually looking at it will find that yes, some better scheduling was possible in practice, okay? So the highest level first, in other words, is a very simple heuristic and actually quite effective in a lot of cases, okay? There are in fact several adjustments or uh, modifications that can be done to this. One of the simplest things that you can think about is what if the execution time of each of these individual operations was not one clock cycle, right? Let's say a multiplier took five clock cycles and adder took three clock cycles and so on, right? In that case, how would you go about computing the level of the operation? It wouldn't just be the ALAP uh, number anymore, right? But you can still use that idea and say, rather than just saying, okay, you know, which is the order in which they should be done, I will take the level as the sum of the execution times from the sync node, that is the bottom most node, until some point at the top, right? So basically, add up the execution times, right? And that gives you the level. So that leads to a set of algorithms which are based on a principle called the highest level first, right? Apart from that, there is there are other heuristics. One of the sort of uh, well-known heuristics in this area is something called force-directed scheduling, which uses some very nice and intuitive ideas. It basically sort of says that, you know, you can think of this entire problem of scheduling as something, you know, there are a bunch of springs and masses right? The masses are the inertia of each of these uh, operations in terms of being moved around from one step to another. A spring is something which is a force, which exerts a force, which either tries to bring a mass into a particular time step or push it out of that time step, right? So they are able to cast this entire thing in a very uh, appealing uh, sort of uh, intuitive manner, which looks like it has a good physical uh, basis. And in fact, it works quite well in practice, okay? My point is there are a number of different heuristics. Most of them are based around this idea of priority lists. And the main sort of differentiator between each of them uh, is the idea of what kind of, uh, you know, uh, approach is used in order to actually compute that priority list.